Hello everybody out there in Facebook land. It's Barb here from Sheridan, Wyoming, barbstamps.com coming to you live. I said Sheridan, Wyoming, didn't I? From Sheridan, Wyoming. And if I'm live on Thursday night on Facebook, it must be 4 p.m. Pacific, 5 Mountain, 6 Central, 7 Eastern. Nailed it. I wonder what the time that would be in Hawaii. I think it might be like 11 o'clock. I'm not positive because, uh, you know, I haven't been to Hawaii for a long time. So there you go. Hello, Jean and Kristen. Nice to see you girls here. Um, after we get a few more people on here, we're going to play Guess What This Is. Um, it might be a fun little game. It might not be. You might think it's stupid, but who knows? It might be fun. So anyway, um, yeah, thank you guys for joining me. I'm super excited to be here. Um, I just got to make sure I'm on my right Facebook page because I have done uh, before where I have not been on the correct page and <laughs> oops and sometimes let's see oh Sherry you're so nice oh my gosh Sherry I have to tell you um, Sherry sent me Sherry makes dish cloths and she sent me a dish cloth here a, a number of months it's in, back in November because Kelly and Dina were here visiting and she sent a care package here and she sent us all these really fluffy soft scarves and a dish cloth and oh my gosh Sherry I have to tell you that's my most favorite dish cloth in the world my mother used to make knitted dish cloths and as she got older and before she passed away she couldn't do it anymore her hands just wouldn't allow her to do it and so I didn't I haven't had a, you know, a, a nice knitted dishcloth for a couple of years and I was so excited to get yours. So thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And I love it so much. So guess what you guys, our virtual retreat kind of started today. It's really for Saturday, but we had so much fun planned that we kind of spill over a little bit. So we posted our first thing today, a card challenge, which is super exciting. Tomorrow, mystery stamping will post at noon. And then tomorrow night is bingo. So we are really excited for that. So I have been feverishly working in my other room. You can see the doorway is back there. Um, prepping everything. I've gotten all the card kits done. Um and packaged they're ready to go I've sorted all the paper it's ready to go um, I've sorted out the paper pumpkin boxes what I shouldn't maybe I shouldn't say anything because it's be a surprise I'm not gonna tell you anymore but I've been sorting and cutting and prepping like a mad person and so today I have to tell you guys I, I have two two projects for you that I'm, I'm pretty happy with my other project I'm not super happy about it. So hopefully you guys like it. We'll see. Um, I guess even if you don't like it, you'll probably tell me you do. So you're really sweet. Okay. Since we have a number of people on here with us tonight, I want to play guess what this is before we get started. Okay. You guys see this? Okay. I want you to comment what you think it is. Now, before you start commenting, think about what a child would call something like this, like a child that's like, like four years old, maybe, you know, three, four, five, somewhere in there. Think about that. And I'll tell you a little funny story while we are discussing what this is. So a number of years ago, uh, my children were in the kitchen playing with Play-Doh. And I was out in the living room working on my computer and I heard one of them say, hand me the their name for this type of item right here. And I thought to myself, what? And so I went out there and I said, hey guys, what are you doing? Oh, we're just playing. I said, oh, that's cool. And I said, uh, what is a, and I said the word that they said. And they picked up something that looks very similar to this, but it was a child. It was like a little, it was a plastic one that came in a Play-Doh set. And so, um, yeah, so let's see what you guys have. So we have thongs, barbecue tongs, pinchers. That's a good one. Um, you guys are never going to get this. Metal tongs, a grabber, barbecue tongs, uh, tongs, tongs, salad tongs, tongs. Okay, so most of you are saying tongs and tongs. Kids, a squeezer, a very good. So what made me think about this was just before I went live, I knocked something off this shelf that my camera mount sits on and I can't reach my hand back there to get it. And so out loud, I say to myself, because of course I talk to myself a lot down here because I need 
professional advice a lot of the time. So I said to myself, I need some poop clotters. Yeah, that's what we call this type of item in my house. Poop clotters. Where they ever came up with that term, I have no idea. And I about died laughing the day that I heard them, the first time I ever heard them say this. When they were playing, and I think my son said to my daughter, hand me the poop clotters. And I was like, what? What are you talking about? So I go out there and I say, what's a poop clotter? And they, that, there was this little purple kind of plastic tong thing that came in a Play-Doh set. Oh my gosh, I died laughing. I told my husband when he came home from work, and these have been poop clotters, whoops, these have been poop clotters in our house ever since. So for like 15 years, yeah, this is poop clotters. So if you ever come to my house and my husband's barbecuing and he says, get me the poop clotters, you'll know exactly what he's talking about. So I thought you guys might find that uh, funny today. <laughs> Because, yeah, I literally said it out loud. Oh, I need poop clotters. And I ran upstairs and grabbed them. And as I was running upstairs, I thought to myself, hmm, I wonder if the gals that watch me on Facebook would have any idea what a poop clotter is. Now you guys know. So Elaine says her family calls them wiener grabbers, which, yeah, that sounds like a great term. But you never know now. So if I ever say poop clotters while I'm doing a Facebook Live video, you guys are going to know what I'm talking about. So, anywho... Handy Mandy is here to help us tonight. Handy Mandy, whoa, I don't know if you guys can see. Oh. I'm going to get my hair done on Monday. And let me just tell you, Monday will be one day shy of seven weeks since I've had my hair colored. Ah! Now, no disrespect to anybody who has gray hair. You know, I... If you've got gray hair and you are living for it, then you do you and you have your gray hair. That's not any, I'm not trying to diss anybody or make anybody feel bad. I just personally don't want my hair to be gray. Pretty simple. And so, um, I don't know why in the world I scheduled an appointment seven weeks out. Oh my gosh. That's like six weeks is a long time for me to go. No, handy, handy, no, handy, handy. Lisa, yes, I do. And I did put it on, but I mean, it's to the point where it's so bad that even my chocolate chip ink pad and my sponge dauber isn't covering this up. So I think the lighting and the fact that you're in selfie mode camera, which isn't super nice, uh, you can't see the gray stripe, but it's there. It's there. So anyways, I can't wait till Monday. And, of course, I have to do a live in our virtual retreat group on Saturday. So, <laughs> yeah, I'll be putting more ink on my head. Anyway, okay, I think I think we're going to go ahead and flip the camera. Oh, yay, Becky got hers done today. She said it was so great. I just, I don't, I don't like it. I mean, I'm assuming eventually I'm, it's going to just come to the point where I'm just going to be like, fine, I don't, you know, I don't care anymore. But right now I still care. And I've been gray for a really long time. I'm 55 and I've probably had gray hair since I was in my early 30s. So I went gray pretty early and I just, I just can't, I just can't do it. So there you go. Okay, so I'm going to flip the camera around and we will do a little more chit-chatting. And then I will show you uh, two of the projects that I like. And the other project that, eh. oh, I never flipped the camera. That's nice. How do you like looking at my ceiling? That's nice. Uh, I'll give you, here's another view of the old poop clotters. <laughs> oh, man. Every time we say it, and it, you know, we all laugh because it's just the most ridiculous word. Anyway, let me make sure my camera is, nope, it's not level at all. Let's get that fixed. All right. We are good to go. Okay. So, I'm sure you've all heard that we had the retirement list came out yesterday. And if you're a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, that means that you got to see the new catalog yesterday. We're not going to talk about that because nobody can order anything out of it yet. We're going to talk about the retirement list because that's what we can order. So, I do have some retirement retiring items that I'm going to be showing you today. And you can get the list by going to this web, this website right here https colon backslash blah 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 tinyurl.com slash you could probably skip all this you could probably just go tinyurl.com slash barb stamps retire list and you can get a very nice list that i fixed i'll 
show you it because Stampin' Up! never gives us, in my opinion, a very nice list. Um, I like, I'm old and I need larger print, so my list is in larger print. Um, I have it sorted by categories. So we have all the bundles in the beginning. And if you guys are looking at this list, take note of these little asterisks because a lot of times when a bundle says it's retiring, all that's retiring is the bundle price, meaning that you don't get your 10% discount anymore when it carries over into the new catalog. So be mindful of these little asterisks over here when you're thinking, oh my gosh, my favorite thing, the Tylemus Tulips is retiring. It's not. It's just not going to be bundled with a discount anymore. Okay. And then we come into embellishments, which is ribbons and, of course, embellishments. Um, so I have categorized them there. We've got the host sets. We've got all the ink. And now keep in mind that they're in colors from 2019 to 2021. They're all retiring. Um, the kits, then we go into paper. Um, and then I do have all the discounts also listed, you know, the regular price, the discount uh, percentage, and then the actual discounted price. Um, and then I have gone through my stamps and marked all of my stamps that are retiring. I didn't do, I didn't mark all these that are retiring, but I have a lot. Anyway, so uh, then we go stamp sets and then I think, what do I have? Tools, which is dies mostly and embossing folders and those kinds of things, sponges and whatnot. And then at the very bottom is the beginner brochure. Uh, you might not even know we have a beginner brochure. We do have a small little brochure and there are a few things that are in that brochure that are retiring. And then here is your little um, legend for the things in the reference column. So it's a really nice list. I highly recommend you guys checking it out and printing it off. Um, it's very helpful to those of us that don't see so good. That's me. Okay, so that's done. Um, we'll be using a few items tonight, so I will let you guys know what's retired. Then, of course, Stamp Happy Academy, you guys. We are still rocking it. We've got about 720 members in Stamp Happy Academy, and we are so excited, and we thank all of you who have joined. Uh, that's very exciting. And right now, between the 16th of March and the 31st of March, each one of us is giving away a three-month basic membership to Stamp Happy Academy. So anytime you place an order with me, any order size, it doesn't matter, I will put your name in the drawing for a free three-month subscription, basic subscription. And now if you already are a member of Stamp Happy Academy and you place an order with me and you win, we will just stop your subscription for three months and you will get it for free. So if you don't have a membership, you'll get three months. If you currently have a membership, you will get suspended that sounds bad. Your membership will be suspended, put on hold for three months, okay? Um, I just did my live event in Stamp Happy Academy on Monday. It was so much fun. I think it was, it was about two hours. We had a lot of fun, and I showed a lot of fun layouts and a lot of cute cards to go with them, so that was really fun. All right. Ooh, my Totally Techniques Online Club. I am getting ready to film the video for that, and I think it's going to be mirror stamping this month, so yay. Stay tuned for that video coming out. Then I still have kits for some of my classes. This one here, my In Bloom, has been a crazy, crazy, crazy popular class. And I'll show you the parts of it. So it uses the In Bloom bundle, which is the Pierced Blooms dies and the um, In Bloom stamp set. And you get a half a package of the Paper Blooms Designer Series paper. You get a half a pack of note cards with envelopes. You get three paper pumpkin boxes because you're going to make, that's one of the projects, is a box with note cards. You also get a roll of the metallic, I just lost my train of thought, Seaside Spray Ribbon, a package of the Snail Mail Baker's Twine, and then you get your pre-cut cardstock kit with a half a pack of um, champagne rhinestones. So you guys, you get all this stuff, well, not the bundle, the bundle's extra. If you need the bundle, it's like $58.25, you can add that on an extra. But you get these two packages full of stuff and these two items for $45. It's an amazing deal. The class is amazing. There's eight cards, plus you're going to make a box and four note cards. You'll still have two boxes left and you'll have a half a pack of note or five note cards left to do another one. So it's a really great deal. The link's in the description of the video. If you want the bundle, you can add that on and I will include them all together. I also have a couple kits left for my sweet ice cream. I think I have two Dragonfly Gardens. I've actually had to make some more. It's been really popular. Uh, my Butterfly Brilliance, I've got cardstock kits 
um, only. I can't get the bundle for you anymore because the paper is sold out. Um, my All the Chicks, I think I have four or five. And then my Flowering Cactus, I have two. So um, most of those links are in the description of the video if you're interested in my online classes. I would love for you to do it. Uh, Berry Blessings class. The, the people that signed up for the retreat before uh, February 26th are getting this in their kit. They could choose this or they could choose another celebration item. But most of the people chose the Berry Blessings bundle, which is the stamp set and the paper. And then they're going to get the class packet too, which is six cards. But I do have some of these for sale outside of the retreat. So you can get this entire thing plus the class for $65. Or you can just get the kit and the class for $35 or just the class for $20. So check all that stuff out in the description of the video. And let's get to stamping. Move some of this out of the way. Okay, here is my first project. We are going to be using the Under My Umbrella uh, bundle, which is a stamp set and a punch. So here's the punch, stamp set, piece of paper. Uh, that's an inside piece of paper, I think. Oh no, that's for the envelope. I got a bunch of, look at a bunch of stuff here. Uh, then I have this, this, and this. And I have this, and I have this, and I have a couple of little masks that I made out of copy paper that we will also be using. So, um, I am going to be using the stitched nested labels. That's what I did to get this little goodie right here. These are retiring. Hello, you girls who have joined us. It's good to see you here. Carol and Vicki and Donna, thank you girls for joining me. Um, I'm using one of the stitched nested labels and then these items here. So let me get my stamps out. You can move that out of the way. We need that ink, this ink, this ink. We need memento. We got some blends and we got some more stamps. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to score my piece of paper. I need my trimmer. So I'm going to start by scoring it at one and a half inches. And I like to use this side of my trimmer when I'm scoring things that are one and a half inches or less. What, Vicki, what did you say? Oh, Vicki said, thank you for stepping. I know I am crazy busy with the retreat, but the show must go on, right, Vicki? Okay, so I'm going to score it at one and a half inches. Okay. And then before I score it again, I'm going to fold it because I want to make sure that I get these ends to meet up nicely. So then what am I going to do? How am I doing this here? I want this to be scored at four and a quarter. So I'm putting this score line that I just made on the four and a quarter inch mark. There it is right there. And I'm going to score it again. I'm just trying to think what, what was I doing? I don't remember all the time. Oh no, I just saw Carol put a sad face. What's going on? Oh, I know. They're retiring a lot of stuff, you guys. But, you know, all things, all good things must come to an end. Unfortunately, we're just going to have to hope that they're going to bring us some more fabulous items, okay? So then I can make a little fun fold kind of that's like this. So basically what you've got here is a one and a half inch score line on this end and a two and three quarters. But I found that when I did that, I didn't get as perfect of a closure as I like. And you guys know I'm a little bit anal, and so I like things to be a certain way. So that way I figured if I did this one and a half inch score line first, and then I flipped it around and put this at four and a quarter, and then scored it again, those should line up really nicely. Okay, then I have a four by five and a quarter inch piece of pool party for the inside, and a five by three and three quarter, which is another piece for the inside. Then I also have a two and a half by five and a quarter inch piece that we're going to run through the baby boss using some retiring folders. And now I haven't even used these folders very much. And so you guys might not even really recognize them, but they're really cute. They are called little details. And one of them is like, uh, like a bunch of stitching, which I think is really cute. And then the other one is, um, I don't even know how you would describe this, but it's really cute also. So it's basically like for ends of a piece of card stuff, but it's really cute. It's got that fun scallop, all these little polka dots and dashes and stuff. So, but we're going to be using this one 
and I want it right up here. No, that's the wrong side. I want it right here. I wanted it with this loop-de-loop -loop kind of uh, pattern. And then I also wanted to catch this little stitching line right here. So I've got my two and a half by five and a quarter. And then I've got my little plates. <clears throat> Excuse me. I got plate one and then plate three because this is a standard folder, not a... Um, 3D, which I don't know if we even have any 3D folders um, for the Baby Boss. We might in the new catalog. I did not, I did not look that closely. I've been way too busy to even look at the new catalog or really look at the retirement list, except to pull my stamps off. Okay. So then we have this fun little pattern. Isn't that cute? I just really like that. I should just you. I should have been using that more often. And now it's retiring, and now it's sad. Okay, so I'm going to add this to the what's going to be the front of my card, so this side here. So I'm going to use some liquid glue. When I do embossing, I like to use, oh, you know what? This looks like I didn't get that in the folder very, very straight. So I am going to do a little thing here where I kind of trim this off just a slight bit to try to make it a tiny bit more even. And I was very sad that this little trimmer was not in the catalog because I was really hoping that it would be because it's amazing. And so if you don't have it, I'm super sorry. But I try not to really use things that you guys can't buy because I know that that's frustrating. But that's just one of those little things that's going to sit on my desk forever because I love it so much. I love it so much that I actually purchased a couple more when they were available to purchase. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. So there we go. We've got that part done. That's cute. I'm going to get my folder out of the way here. Uh, this goes inside. So we're going to be done with this for the moment. And so I have my little stitched label here. And I have a little flower grouping. Is that the one I want or is it this one here? I think it's this one here. So I need my memento ink and I'm going to stamp it kind of up at the top of the label. I should have done this earlier so that it could dry a little bit, but maybe we can do something else while it dries. I just have to close my eye and see that I screw that up. Kind of, but I think it'll be okay. So then I have a little mask. As you can see, I stamped this on a piece of copy paper and I just kind of cut the bottom of it off. That was all I cut off because I only need the bottom because I'm going to stamp the boots and I am going to put my mask on. So when I put a mask on, I don't put it all the way covering my stamped image. I pull it up just a slight bit because that way when you actually stamp the image that you are stamping on top of it, it will work better. And I'm going to stamp these cute little boots. Okay. Uh, actually, I'm going to have to move my hand out of the way. So, let me get. I should have used a post-it note now that I think about it because then it would stick. But... We can do this. I'm a professional. What number is that die? Ooh, I will tell you, Barbara. Hold on just a minute. Let me get this, uh, get these boots stamped, and then we will figure that out. Okay. Oh, there you go. And then my little mask came off with my stamped image, so now my little flowers are coming out of my boot. Uh, let's see the dies. So Barbara wants to know what number, because I number all mine, so I started in the I started in the middle, and the smallest one is one, and then two, three, four, five. I think it's is it four, or did I leave it over at my stiff and cut in a boss machine? I might have. How many are supposed to be in here? Nine. I have four. Okay, so we have one, two, three. This is four. It must be five. And I must have left that over there when I got done cutting them. So I think it's five. Five out from the middle. Okay. So we have that. That's, you know what? I have another one here, and I'm not super happy with that, so I'm going to start again. You know, you guys know how I am. I'm a little bit anal. I can't help myself. We're going to try and see if we can make it a little bit better. Okay, so we're going to look at the one we just stamped. So my flowers are a little high, and my boots are a little crooked. So now that we know that, we're going to put the flowers a tiny bit lower, like that. And then we're going to try so that the boots aren't crooked. All right, so stick that back on there. Ink up a set of boots. And try this again. 
Okay. That I think is actually better. You guys got to agree with me there, right? That looks better. Okay. So while I have that, I have my little sentiment that says, hello, sunshine. And I am going to put that kind of up here a little like towards the top of the boots. There we go. Then I also have the boots that I cut out. And so I'm going to put the little mask over the boots, doing the same thing. I'm not putting it right to the edge. I'm pulling it back just a tiny bit from the stamped edge. And then I have this tiny little flower arrangement. And I'm going to put that like right here. So it looks like there's some flowers on the ground behind my boots. I love masking, you guys. It's like the coolest thing when you stamp it and then you pull it up and you're like, oh my gosh, that looks so good. Okay. So while that is drying a second, we're going to stamp an umbrella. Oh, I guess I still need this. Right about here on a scrap. And then just to save a tiny bit of time, I would color that with some blends and punch it out. So I used the light purple posy and then the dark pool party. And then I just slid my punch right in there and cut that puppy out just like so. So we'll have this one in case something happens and we something gets screwed up. Oh, you know what I need? I need the little umbrella handle. So we're going to put the umbrella on the inside of the card. So I'm going to move this little stamp to the boots and I'm going to put my umbrella on there and I'm going to stamp that on the inside of my card. This set is really cute. Okay, so I would then put my umbrella where I kind of want it to be and then I would stamp my uh, umbrella handle. Okay. So that's going to go like that on the inside of the card. So I guess we could go ahead and put that together because I want to wait till that to dry because I've been having a tiny bit of issues um, when I stamp something with uh, the memento and then try to color it. I need to wait a little bit for some reason. I don't know if the weather's changed down here or if the paper, when they changed to the, they had to change to the basic white because the Whisper White factory closed because of stupid COVID. Um, I don't know but it saddens me. So I just wait a few minutes and then it works just fine. So lots of times when I'm going to go live, I will pre-stamp stuff just so that it has a chance to dry and then I don't have to wait, you know, keep you guys waiting while we, while we do that. All right. I'll add a tiny bit of glue to that. Oh my gosh, this set, I should have, I should, there, I just have too many sets. No, no, no. I do not have too many. Is my husband down here? I don't think he is. Whew. Got lucky there. Um, where did I put? Oh, here it is. The raindrops. Just because I thought, why not? You know, it would be cute to have a few raindrops coming down on top of our umbrella. Okay. Then I have another little sentiment that says, uh, I think it says it's your day. Sometimes I can't read upside down and backwards. Um, yeah. I have to wait for it to dry also. Yeah, I don't know. Like it's just one of those things, and it's fine. I mean, I've got plenty of other things to do down here. It's not like I don't have time. But, okay, so we will... Ooh, maybe we should stamp this here, and then I could just write a note up on the top. <gasps> Yay. That's what I'm going to... <gasps> oh! Is there a piece of hair on this? Oh, my word. Do you see that piece of hair? It's, like, gigantic. It's probably one of mine. Ugh. Well. Hmm. That... That sucks. Okay, we are going to try to fix this quickly. Not quickly, but you know. We're gonna make sure we have the hair off of it. For one, bring in my chamois and clean it off. Jeez Louise, that's one of those dumb things, you guys, you know? And you just, ugh! Okay, it is what it is, it's fine. We are going to stamp it on this little piece of white. And then we will flag the end of it a bit. And I 
see that we have classic label punch. You know, I don't think it'll work, Terry. I think this um, sentiment is a little bit too wide for that, but I'll go grab it and we'll, we'll slide it in there and see. But I think this is going to work what I'm going to do. Um, this is also retiring, you guys. This is another sad day. Oh, it would work. Yeah. I'm going to try my, this, this is what I'm going to do. I decided. I already decided. Yeah. Okay. Because, oh, you know what I can do? Ooh, you know what I can do? Sometimes I get these little wild hairs. When I screw something up, well, here we go. So I have a tiny little scrap here of Purple Posy. And I am going to put a tiny, tiny little bit of glue right here. That's too much glue. Get off. And I am going to set it like that. Get the glue off my hand. And we're just going to trim this off. So then it will look like we purposely made a cute little sentiment piece that has a little tiny bit of purple posy in the back. And we'll do this. Okay, I think I'm okay with this now that I screwed that up. A little bit of glue on there. And look at that. I think we did it. Make sure it's straight. Okay, hold on. I got to close my eye and look at it. I think it's straight. I think that'll work. Yep, that's what we're going to do. Okay, and then we're going to glue that onto the inside of said card. And then we will be ready to color the outside pieces. Okay. There. Oh, that's cute. Honestly, that's really cute. Okay. I'm not mad anymore. <laughs> Sometimes I just get so frustrated with myself. All right. Okay, so then I'm going to bring this in, and I'm going to start with a tiny bit of the dark purple posy, just right here on the edge of the boot. And then I'm going to use the light to color the rest of it in. So I'm going to kind of pull that dark to the center of the boot. There we go. We're getting her done. So we'll have just a slight bit of, you know, darkness over on the edge. Tiniest bit, which actually I can't even see it now, but it's fine. Coloring, I mean, I know I did some decent coloring last week, but coloring is not usually my, uh, my strong suit, you guys. I'm just not that great at it. Okay, so I'm going to do this little tiny flower while I have my uh, marker out and then there's like a little thing back here which I'm assuming is a flower so we're gonna uh, get that one and then here's my dark and what, am I, what was I gonna do with that nothing stop stop pulling that out okay then I have a smoky slate this is a dark and I'm gonna do just the, the heels of the boot like that oh I know what I was gonna do with the dark I was going to do the top of the boots. Is this dark? Yes. I was going to do that little tiny top part of that boot. Okay. Then I'm going to use my dark pool party. And we will get the flowers here. Hmm. What do I want to do? I'm going to do, I guess I'll do both of these big ones dark. And then that small one, I'll do light. And then the one that's kind of just barely peeking out the back. I'll do light also. Okay. Oh my gosh. I have a funny story about my son. You guys always know. <sighs> He's been talking about wanting to buy another vehicle. So he has like a full size pickup that he bought himself last summer from a friend. And it's been kind of a work in progress, but um, he knew that when he bought it, he only paid a thousand dollars for it. And he's probably put in, I don't know, maybe a couple thousand dollars. Oh, sorry, you guys. I was down looking at what I was coloring, so I probably wasn't talking very loud. I apologize for that. Um, so he got this truck, 
and he has done some work to it. He put a couple thousand dollars into it. Anyway, yada, 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 whatever. Um, but he decided he wanted to buy something for fun. So he bought this 99, 1991 um, Ford Ranger because he wants to just, like, destroy it. He paid $500 for it. They found a couch. Him and his friends found a couch on the side of the road that they threw in the bed of this truck because they're going to apparently sit in it. I don't Whatever. 17-year-old boys, they are weird. Um, and, yeah, he just bought it so that he can screw around with it. And if it gets wrecked or damaged, he doesn't care. Okay, whatever. I mean, we've all done some dumb things with our money, so I guess I can't complain. Okay. So I thought maybe, and I don't know if this is going to work or if I'm even going to like it, but we have these cute little butterflies, and they're retiring because, of course, Purple Posey is retiring. Well, all these colors are retiring. And so I didn't know if a butterfly underneath the Hello Sunshine was going to work. But we're going to go for it because why not? Okay, so I'm only going to put glue just on this edge because I don't want it to, you know, impede the opening of the card. And I'm going to set that right here. Is that straight? No. Come on, Barb. I think that's better. Okay. I think that is it for the card. Oh, I'm, oh look at that. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? Where did I put that other one that I messed up? Actually, I need to cut another one. Well, I'm going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut another one of these. And I'm going to attach it. I'm going to stick it in there so it covers that up. Um, oh, yeah, he'll have to pay for it, Evelyn. I mean, he's got to pay for everything. We're not paying for anything because he doesn't. he's a 17-year-old kid. He doesn't need two vehicles. One is plenty. So, anyways, you guys, before I actually mail this out, I'm going to cut another one of these. I'm going to glue these together. I mean, I'll cut it off. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'll just tuck it under because I do have some free space under there. And then I'll trim it off and tuck it under, and then it'll be pretty. So that's the plan for that. Okay, so here's a tip about stamping on envelopes. So I'm going to stamp that umbrella on the envelope. Where is my ink? Here it is. Okay, so I'm going to kind of put it off a little bit so it's a little more random that way. And then where's my umbrella handle? Uh, oh, it's right here. And I may have to mask it. Let's see. I think we're going to. So I'm going to pull this one that I punched out already. And I'm going to set that right about like that so I can still see some of that stamped image. And then we'll do that. Okay. So the trick to coloring envelopes so that you don't make a mess on them is to put a piece of cardstock inside of it. So this is kind of a, um, just a piece of white that I've stuck in into the corner. And then when I go to color this, it's not going to bleed. It'll bleed through, but it's not going to bleed through to the back of the envelope because envelopes are a lot thinner than paper. And you could see how it bled through on my Whisper White cardstock or basic white, I guess it is. Excuse me. Um, and so it would definitely do that on the envelopes as well. But it actually it would probably go through the envelope to the back side of the envelope. So anyways, yeah, my kid bought this dumb vehicle and ugh, whatever. I just keep trying to remember, you know, when I was a kid, of course I wasn't a boy, but, um, you know, I probably, you know, he works hard. He probably works more than a kid should, um, but he's doing okay in school and, you know, he needs the money because he's got these vehicles. And, you know, you want to be able to buy stuff. Okay. So then when I pull out this layer, you can see on the inside that it definitely bled through, but it didn't go through to the back side. Okay, so here is our first card, cute, and I'm going to fix that if you guys are just joining us. I'm going to put another layer back there, and then our envelope, and yay, okay. Oh, I should leave it out while I'm cleaning up my mess. Maybe I can, oh, Mandy, can you please hold that close for me? Thank you, you're such a dear. Okay, um, so Mandy's going to hold that closed while I clean up the little bit of a mess I've got going on here. I'm gonna put everything back in the bucket. And then we will move on. And then it just gets me closer to the card that I'm not super happy about. <laughs> if you guys weren't here in the very beginning, I was telling everyone that I I did do three cards. I normally do three cards, and I made three cards for you guys. But one of them, 
I'm just not happy with it. And so maybe you can convince me that it's not as bad as I think. We'll see. Okay. Let me grab another bucket. This next card is actually a card that I had made quite a while ago that I've just been kind of waiting to share. I don't know why. I've been waiting. I just have been waiting. It just hasn't worked out that I needed to share it. And today I was a little desperate because I'm in prep mode for the retreat and I needed I needed some help. So this was a card that I had already kind of done. So we're going to do it. It's really kind of a fun, it's not a fun fold, but it's an interesting cut on the <laughs> carol says this polish and ring makes the hand look real <laughs> do, 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 do. twilight zone reference there okay um so the paper is from the fine art floral designer series paper and i'm using this pattern here and then this is on the back side of that so there's a lot of very beautiful papers in here and you could do this with a number of the papers that are in the set so okay these are my like templates that I made myself. So I've got Pretty Peacock cardstock. And as you probably know, Pretty Peacock is one of our colors that's retiring. Boo hoo. I really like this one. I mean, I don't always like every color they come out with, but I've really grown to like Pretty Peacock quite a bit. Um, we're also going to be using the Art Gallery stamp set. I'm going to be using this uh, stamp here along with this little um, filler piece, I guess kind of is what it's called. Um... Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so then I've got Pool Party Ink. This is one of my brand new ink pads. Remember I told you guys last week that I got brand new ink pads because I got all the Stampin' Up! storage and I'm going to fix my whole area. Well, yeah, I got everything in, but I just don't have time to fix it right now. <laughs> so my daughter's going to come home from college next week, and so I think I'm going to see if she'll help me. See if she'll help me fix it up. Okay, so this is the inside piece. I just wanted to stamp something on the inside. It's not something that needs to be... Um, I don't know, super amazing or anything like that. Just so that there's a little something fun on the inside when um, the recipient opens it up. So I stamped that in Pool Party, and now I'm going to do the over stamping in um, the uh, blah, 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 Pretty Peacock. There. Okay. Did I get ink on my hand? No, I didn't. I thought for sure I did. Do you like your hands? I know they are kind of funny. All right. So then my piece of paper, this is a three by five piece of designer series paper. And I want to cut it so that it's like a little wonky. I want to cut it so it looks like this. Okay. So when I first, I found a card like this, I think on Pinterest probably. And so it took me a little bit of trial and error to get my paper cut the way I liked it. And I found a little trick. Um, leave this part and this part are straight okay you don't mess with those you just want to angle this piece and this piece so what I found is if I start at about mm, well here's my little cheater piece where do we start no it's like this no that's not right what the heck is it like this no <gasps> what did I do does anybody know what I did that's supposed to be straight they're both supposed to be straight Okay, now I have to cheat. This is the card that I made. Okay, this is the card we are making. And I thought that earlier today when I was making my template, did I? Oh, okay. <laughs> These two sides are straight. I'm like, I know I did that right. So this is a straight edge and this is a straight edge. So this piece, this blue piece was a three by five also. There. <laughs> that was hard. So it was a three by five. So when I decided to cut it off, flip it, I know, gosh, can you believe that cherry? Duh. So when I decided to cut it off, I initially, I came in about a half of an inch from this edge to here. So if I come in about a half an inch, that means I'm putting that part on the track. And then I just went down almost to the point down here. Okay. So a half inch to the point is about right so this is my cheater piece it's pretty dang close if it's not perfect it doesn't make any difference then from the bottom I came I wanted to come up 
about a quarter of an inch on this side, and this is about three quarters of an inch on this side. So again, you're just eyeballing it. it, it there's no right or wrong. You're just going to wing it. And if it doesn't, perf it's not perfect the way you want it, just cut some more off. Nobody cares. Okay, so there you go. So these two sides are remain straight, and then these are going to be cut a little bit wonky. Okay, then I also took a, I think this is a two by five piece of Pretty Peacock, and I ran it through the Dainty Diamonds folder, which is also retiring. Boo hoo. And now this one, I want these two sides to be the straight sides. So we would have these two sides being straight. So now instead of cutting off on this side of the paper, I'm cutting it off on this side. So I just have a tiny little bit. It's almost like to the corner down to about, about a half an inch. So I would put about a half an inch over there. And then this little tip is in the track. Again, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. So there's what we've got there. And then you can see down here, I've got about a quarter to a half again, I suppose. So we've got a half up there, quarter down here, chop it off. And that, so I'm going to keep these because the next time I try to do that, I'll never remember. So now we have these two pieces and we can just stick them on the card. So I'm going to grab some seal here. Oh, you know what I think I'm going to do first? I think I'm just going to add See, are these the straight sides? Yes. So this right here. Ugh, come on. Sometimes if you don't pull it off just right, it doesn't, it doesn't like it. And we're just going to stick it on the front so that it's flush with the fold line and about mm, eighth of an inch or so from the top. Okay. And then this guy is going to come in underneath. So it's flush at the top with your designer series paper piece. So you'll just get that in there. Nope, it's like this. But it's still flush at the top. Yep. So I'm just going to add some adhesive on this side. So it'll be like that. And then this side also. Where is... This card is a little more complicated than I remembered it. I actually made this for a swap. And I made like 25 of them. And I don't remember struggling with it this much when I was making it. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably because my brain is fried okay so like I said we're just going to line it up at the top with the designer series paper so that it goes straight across at about an eighth of an inch from the top and then we'll do that and there okay so then I have a half inch by mm, say three ish piece of this pool party paper and I am going to stamp the I'm thinking of you sentiment because I've been needing a lot of these lately and I'm not happy about it, but uh, it is what it is. And so we are going to stamp I'm thinking of you in Peacock. Yeah, so Cheryl, once you get it kind of figured out, and if you guys do decide to do this, it actually looks really cool when it's done. Um, practice with scrap paper, like just copy paper scraps that you have, you know? Yeah. Just practice with those and it'll be fine. Okay. So I'm thinking of you. We're going to stamp that belt like this. There we go. And then I'm going to use my banner triple punch, which is retiring also. Wah! Because I do kind of like it for some things. Sometimes I snip them myself, but sometimes I like to use this. So today we're going to use this for this project and we're just going to eyeball it and hope it's good. I think I'm going to go a little farther in just because there's a, like too much there. That works. And then we will stick this on here. Actually, I'm going to cut some of that off. That's too far too. See my original sentiment. This is actually, I think from a celebration set. That's how long I've been just having this out on my desk, wanting to share it with you guys. Um, since like probably December is when I actually did this because we were making swaps in December uh, for the celebration brochure when it came out. So yeah, wow. <laughs> time flies when you're having a good time stamping. Okay, the layout is cool. And hopefully my, you know, maybe I can try to come up with some better directions than what I showed you. But, but honestly, you guys, it doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter how your cuts are because... It just doesn't matter. As long as there's some angle to it, it's going to be fine. Okay. 
Then, ooh, I need my opal rounds. Okay. Here they are. Oh, and then for the retreat, I am frantically... I had ordered something in February for the retreat. And it was on back order at the time. I mean, I thought, no big deal. It was supposed to be in the middle of March. You know, the end of the March is when I'm, in, I'm mailing out the boxes. It's no problem. It'll be here. Um, Stampin' Up! mailed out my black matte dots on the 16th of March. Um, they live in Utah. I live in Wyoming. It's literally, we're connected. I don't have them. And the tracking information tells me nothing. It just says that the post office has it in Denver, Colorado, and that is all the tracking I get. So I keep crossing my fingers every single day that my black matte dots show up because they have to go in the retreat boxes that I'm mailing out on Monday. So you guys cross your fingers for me that they arrive tomorrow or Friday, or no, tomorrow or Saturday because we get mail on Saturday. They came through the post office. Um, yeah, please keep your fingers crossed for me because I'm going to be really, 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 really mad if um, I can't get my boxes out of here. So um, I am fully prepared that if they don't show me some kind of tracking tomorrow to order them again next day air from Stampin' Up! so that they will be here on Monday. Um, and depending when next day air arrives, I still might be able to get them out. So let's just hope they arrive tomorrow. Or that I get some sort of update on my stupid tracking. And yeah. Okay. So here it is. Two cards the same but different. And so again, like I said, the angles, they don't even matter. <coughs> Excuse me. It's all good. My sister lives in Wyoming and she hasn't received her paper pumpkin kits either. Yeah, Sherry, me neither. I don't have my paper pumpkin kit yet either. Um, normally I have it by about the 20th of the month. That's like super late if I don't have it by the 20th. And today's the 25th and I still don't have it. So, <laughs> yay. Okay, well, let me clean up this mess and we will move on to the card that I am not super happy about. <sighs> Hopefully you guys will not think it's as awful as I do. Anyway, it's not awful. I shouldn't say that because, I mean, you know, it, it's a it's a decent enough card. I just really struggled trying to get it to work. You, do you ever, does that ever happen to you? You're trying to make something and everything you do just, it doesn't work. Stuff just doesn't work. And that was me. Okay. So let me get the scraps out of here because I don't like trash. Okay. These. These are really pretty, though. I do really like them. Okay. Um. Oh. Hi, Mandy. Mandy's going to be back to talk with us a little bit about the Field of Flowers stamp set. Now, this is a stamp set that I really, really liked when it first came out in the brand new catalog last year. Because, of course, anytime you get something new, it's always super exciting. And I used it like a crazy person. And I probably made, I don't know, five or six different designs with it, which... It's kind of crazy for me that I don't always do that. Um, and then I put it away because I had other stamp sets to use. And then the holiday catalog came out and then it was celebration. And now it's retiring. <laughs> and I'm kind of sad because I don't think I've used it to its full potential. And it has a super cute little stamp or little punch that goes with it that punches out. Oh, Debbie wants to know how I made the ring. Debbie Stampin' Up! used to sell wire a long, 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 long time ago. And they sold it in collections of uh, neutrals and like colors. And I saved some. And I just wrapped the um, wire around and pinched it off because I'm a jeweler, you know. No, I'm not. And then I put a rhinestone on it. With That's it. That's just one of our rhinestones on the ring. And I have to say, you know what? I'm pretty impressed with my skills of jewelry making. I'm just going to say that. Okay. So it's got a cute punch that punches all these super little, cute little flowers. And okay. Here we go. Let's just see what we can do with this. So these are my cardstock pieces. Ooh, we got some glare going on. We don't like that. Um, I've got a crumb cake card base, maybe. Um, a three by four and a quarter inch piece of white. And a three and like, what would it be? Three and three eighths by three, three and three eighths, four and a quarter. No, that's not right. Three and one eighth. I'm like, that doesn't, the math doesn't work out. Okay, start again. Three by four and a half, three and an eighth by four and three eighths. That's the math. Hold, please, while I get my Diet Pepsi out of my cup holder. Thank you, Lisa. 
and take a drink. Okay. Put those aside. We're going to work on this. I need a scratch paper. And um, I have some a few other cards that I made using this. And I had them out. I was going to show you guys. And now they're lost. Oh, I found them. Okay. So here is one that I did for a swap way back. Um, where I inked up this image here with, uh, what is it, petal pink. And then I dipped a sponge dauber into Calypso Coral and then added it to the centers before I stamped it. So I thought that looked pretty cool. So super simple otherwise. Um, then just a layer of petal pink and a sentiment from, I don't know, did that, is that stamp set retiring? Um, I don't know, it might be. Um, and then this little skinny folder. So I mean, a super simple card, but this was the highlight. I thought that was pretty pretty. I thought that was pretty. Okay. Um, I got this one in a swap. <laughs> Looking at this makes me super sad because this layering squares are leaving us with the retirement list. Wah! So it's just ribbon, by the way. Okay. Here's another one that I got um, using that same little image, but this one doesn't have the um, sponged thing in there. Um, so that was kind of fun. Here's the same technique um, I just did a different color combination, or I just opposite the colors. They're all the same colors, coral, jade, and petal pink, but I just kind of moved them around a little bit using that same technique, um, just because I thought it was fun. So those are a few cards that I have done, and now we're going to do this one. And so fingers crossed that it doesn't stink. Oh, let me get my hair pizzazz. I can't wait for you guys for me to be able to share pictures of my old mess that I have behind the camera here where all my ink pads and all my tools and everything are to when I get all my new storage in and everything. I'm so excited. All right. So I'm going to stamp this so that it is slightly off the bottom of the page. And I can, you guys probably can't see, but I can see through the stems at the bottom and I can see that they're just barely off because I want full coverage on the bottom there. Okay. So that was step one. Uh, step two is get some more scraps. Um, of course, the minute that I don't have a scrap handy, I need a scrap. Okay, so here is a little strip of white. So I'm going to stamp that little flowery image that works with the punch. And I have a tiny little tip for you guys. So I'm going to stamp some in Seaside Spray, which is a retiring color. So if you have this punch and you're doing this, I recommend this little, so there's two flowers on this end and there's one here. This little one, kind of angle it down a little bit if you can on your paper. Um, so it's closer to the bottom. I probably should have a bigger piece of paper, but we will just cut it off. It'll be fine. Okay. And then I need to start dumping stuff around. I need to clean that off because I'm going to do it in Rococo Rose also. And I honestly think I might do it in Night of Navy too. We'll see. Tap that onto my hand and get the water off. So I'm going to turn my strip around. And I'm going to do the same thing where I'm going to kind of put that small little flower towards the bottom of my strip. And again, I probably should have made a bigger strip, but it's fine. Everything's fine. Um, here's a bigger strip. Okay, so we're going to clean this off again. And then we're going to do some Night of Navy. And we will see if this card is going to work out. My tester card didn't work out but I changed one thing so we'll see okay so this time I'm actually gonna put it so it's angled a little farther down and we'll see if that makes any difference in the punch okay so then you're gonna bring your punch in and then when you slide your piece of cardstock in you just line it up oh you know what I have to do I need to get rid of some of that bulk in there because it's not wanting to so actually, I think my skinnier strip will actually work better when I go to punch it out. So, okay. So line that up so you see all six flowers in their little windows. It's kind of like a puzzle. And we'll get those. And then the Rococo Rose flowers. Yeah, a skinnier strip actually does work a tiny bit better, I think. Get over there. Oh, you know what? Actually, it's not. So we are going to do 
that because I still need a handle. Okay, that's going to work, I think. This closing my eye thing is just giving me the business. Can't see as well. Okay. There we go. And then we have this Seaside Spray, and we're going to do the same thing. Okay. Then... The reason I turned my punch over, if you were wondering, is because I didn't want flowers to, you know, fly all over the place and potentially end up in my ink pads because I left them open like a ding dong. Barb should always close her ink pads because Barb always seems to stick her fingers in the ink pads. Okay, so I'm going to push my little flowers over to the side. I don't need that anymore. Before I put my flowers on, though, I do want to do my sentiment. So this has a lot of nice combinations. So I'm going to choose um, my friend, you are always in my heart. So I'm going to stamp three sentiments or four actually, four sentiments on here. And I'm going to do the main one, the always. Actually, maybe I'll do them all in navy. I don't know. We'll see. So the always is going to kind of go up here ish. Like so. Did that work out? Oh, I kind of fudged it. Ugh. I cannot wait to get my cataract fixed, you guys, honestly. I used to, didn't care, but I care a lot now because it's really starting to annoy me to no end. Okay, so I need, let's see, you are. So I'm stamping you are first because it's going to be the closest thing to always. So I'm going to stamp you are. And then we'll do my friend above that. About like so. Oh, if you guys just joined us, you're going to have to go and watch the beginning of the video because we discussed the proper name for this tool that comes out of your kitchen. So if you want to know what my kids call this, go back and watch the beginning of the video. Okay, so this says, my friend, you are always in this. is going to say, in my heart. Um, I closed not too bad okay but before I actually do anything else I'm gonna clean these off because I just think having too many stamps with ink is not a good thing to do it's not a good thing to have especially when you're Barb okay let's see Cindy says I'm so envious of your grid blocks you know what Cindy they're actually stamping up stamping up used to sell these they're just window clings they're like little window clings and stampin up sold them for a couple of years and I uh, was obsessed you know what you might be able to do a person might be able to buy like a clear sheet of window cling or maybe some acetate or something and use a sharpie and draw lines on them you know what I mean draw lines on the acetate and then maybe put the acetate on there I don't know but I just I have to have them and I feel bad it's, like I said it's one of those things that you guys can't buy and I know that's frustrating but I love them and I can't stamp without them so <laughs> sorry Okay, that's done. Now we have these little flowers, and I think I want to pop some of them up with the dimensionals. So, of course, they have to be kind of the big ones. And, yes, this is still the set of dimensionals that had Diet Pepsi spilled all over it. And, yes, they still work. And, yes, I'm going to close my ink pad here just in a moment. Um, is that going to work? Yes, I think that will. Um, got my eyes closed still. Uh, let's see what colors do we have on the dimensionals. I have, oh, they're both for Cocoa Rose. That's not helpful because I think I wanted to do like a large one of each color. This is going to be a bit of a putz. Oh, my word. <laughs> Oh, how does that work out, you guys? If I could see, this would be so much easier. Because I can hardly wait. Because once I get my cataract fixed, then I can get new glasses. And I realize you guys probably have never seen me in glasses, but I do wear glasses a lot. Um, but 
not when I'm stamping because I can't see up close with my glasses because I need new ones. Okay, so now what am I going to do? Barb is going to add, I think we'll add these bigger flowers first. So I'm going to peel off the backings and I'm going to use my take your pick tool to add them to the card. For a little bit of dimension a little bit of fun all right the card is kind of growing on me as I'm making it for you guys I'll show you the one that I did that I didn't like after I get done so I'm gonna put some drops of liquid glue um, in various spots uh, maybe right there and then we are gonna add some of these other flowers to the glue spots. Oh, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should put that one here. Why? I don't know. Come back here. And then I need a tiny one. No, I want a tiny navy one. Ah! There we go. Okay. And then here is a little seaside spray and another night of navy. All right. I guess that's an okay card, is it? Did I get all the spots covered? I think I did. Okay. So I'm going to move these over here in case I decide I might want to add some more. And then I'm going to add this to this layer. Oh, no. Wait, 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 wait. I'm not done. There's this tiny little dragonfly in here. And you know what? When I got it out today, I thought, oh my gosh, does that tiny dragonfly fit in our dragonfly punch? Well, I'll show you what I found. You're not going to be happy. <laughs> because I thought, oh my gosh, certainly it has to fit in there. And while it does, it's like too... The punch is too big. So I don't know if maybe you did it... Well, oh, hold on. Let's try it. If I stamped it on like a lighter, like a different, like not white. So if I actually stamped it on this Seaside Spray scrap, would that look any better? Maybe. And maybe somebody's already figured this out. I have no idea. This I just got this wild hair today when I was pulling this stamp set out and looking at it. I thought, oh my gosh, does that work? Hmm, I don't know. It's not perfect. So I probably wouldn't do it. But there you go. You guys might. Okay, I need some glue. No, I don't. I need to stamp these dragonflies. Focus, Barb. Focusing is so hard. Okay. So I kind of thought I would stamp one here and then maybe up here. Okay. Can I trim it? You probably could, but um, I don't know. I mean, it seems like it would be a lot of work. You know what I mean? just for a, it just seems like it would be, it, for me, it would be too much work. I wouldn't do it. Well, I don't know. Maybe I would. Well, except you got the head up there, which is in a weird spot. So I don't know. I was kind of bummed. I was hoping it was going to work. It looked, when I saw that, I thought, oh, that's going to work perfectly. And then it didn't work. Oh, whatever. Oh, hold on. I probably want to put this on with dimensionals. And these are dimensionals that don't have Diet Pepsi spilled on them. Okay. So we're going to add this to our layer of whatever this is. Navy. Oh, Heavenly Days. That's not the right orientation. I think I cut this so that I had barely a border. And I thought I had more than I did. Okay. I don't know. It's still not my favorite. Stamp large dragonfly and cut out with a little punch sauce. Oh, yeah, that's what I have done, Carol. But I got excited because when I saw this tiny dragonfly, I thought, oh, my gosh, that's great. Exactly, Evelyn. So that's why I didn't want to do it. So now, you guys, I don't know. This is the one I made today. Okay. And I just, there's just, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because I tried to do the sentiment in multiple colors. Maybe that's throwing me off. Maybe this the ribbon down here is throwing me off. Maybe because the card base is, see, I don't know what it is. But there's something about that card that I don't like that much. 
So then I thought, well, could I put it on crumb cake? But now that I'm looking at it, no, I don't think I can. Would this one look okay on the seaside spray? Maybe this one would be better just because it doesn't have the sentiments. But I feel like this is plain and would need something stamped on it. So I don't know. Maybe another dragonfly up there in the corner. Maybe I'm just overthinking it and it should be fine. Just, ooh, I could try this little tiny flower. Okay, we'll try something here. Because you know what? We can always change our mind if we don't like it. So I'm going to get a piece of seaside spray and I'm going to cut it in half. Oops. I just tripped over all the stuff that I have on the floor. Okay. So let me just quickly see what I'm doing here in Boston. You know, I thought that too, Teresa, but I don't. Hmm. No, I can't do that. Um, we're just going to try something and it might suck and who knows? I wasn't sure if maybe I could like stamp a couple of flowers down here in the corner and then maybe those same flowers up here in the corner. Does that make a difference? I think it makes a difference. I think it's cuter. Maybe it's too much blue. Maybe it needs to be like Rococo Rose. Does that? I think you're right about the embossing folder but I don't my machine isn't over here I don't know you guys what are we gonna do okay I forgot to be looking and there's always a lag time with Facebook so you like it I'm thinking you guys are saying this so you like the seaside spray the SS or the CC for crumb cake Oh, that might work, Cheryl. Or the RR for Rococo. She says maybe I should make my navy layer bigger. That might work, too. But I think most of you were liking the blue. Okay, Teresa says the SS. So most of you are liking this. And I don't hate that. So I think we'll go with it. Navy layer. You know what? Maybe I'll add another layer of navy. Maybe we could try that. If we had two layers of navy... All right, hold on. Let me get my trimmer out. Here we go. Okay, so that's three. I'm going to measure that again to make sure I said the right dimensions. This is four and a quarter, and this is not quite three. Okay, so not quite three is like that. So maybe if we make it a full quarter of an inch, maybe that'll work. Four and a half is what that should be then. Is that right? Nope. I think I did the exact same thing. Ugh. <laughs> oh my. Okay, what am I doing? We're going to guess once again. And we're going to see if we can get this to work. Okay, so that's definitely bigger. So, it might be too big though now. Too big. Yeah, I think it's too big. Okay, I got an idea. I'm going to cut this off of this. I'm going to cut the dimensionals off. This is what I always do when I have to get rid of dimensionals on something. I just cut them. So maybe this is a tip for you. I have no idea. Sometimes I have lots of tips, sometimes not so much. Okay, so this is too big, but I think we could cut it down and make it work. Okay, so now I need my handy dandy trimmer here and we're gonna cut off a chunk and I think that would work for that side to side and then this we'll try that much okay oh we gotta go a little more it's still too slight bit too big boy I get you guys never thought you'd be sitting here on Facebook trying to help me make a card huh Oh, that was a great tip. Well, great. Yay. I didn't think that was a fantastic tip, but that's what I always do when I try to get dimensionals off things. I just cut them. Okay. So how's that? Is that okay? Is that better? 
with the bigger layer. I'm going to wait a few. The struggle is real today, Cynthia. Oh my gosh. I'm telling you, that retreat is kicking my butt and I can't, my brain is fried. I'm living on Diet Pepsi and pretzels these last couple of days. You know what? I think we're going to go for it because sometimes if you overthink things too much, you'll go crazy. So now I'm just going to put dimensionals in the spots where there aren't any. <laughs> and whoever gets it will never know that I did that. Unless I send it to one of you guys and then you'd absolutely know. And you'd be like, oh, there's that card. We know all about that card. I feel like there's just a tiny bit up here at the top of this layer that's just like a sliver. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Boy, I got a mess going on here now. But we, we did it. We made it. So obviously, it wasn't a total bust. So thank you guys for helping me fix this because... I really was, I almost wasn't even going to make the, the third card. I was just going to say, sorry guys, I only have two cards because I just couldn't get it done today. Couldn't get it done. A super simple layout for sure. I mean, this is like a standard layout. Everybody can make this layout. So hopefully that is a good card for you guys. And if you have the set, hopefully it will inspire you. I actually copied myself by making this card because I made this card out of this was a swap card that I made back in like May of last year. And then this was another one that I made that I didn't really like that much. I don't know why I put these rhinestones here, but whatever. So these are where I got my inspiration for this one. I just oriented it a different way. So I cased myself. Okay. So let me bring in the other cards that we have. We have that one. And then this one that needs Mandy's help to stay closed. Thank you, Mandy. Okay, so you guys remember the retiring list. Where is my cheat sheet? Because I have a really nice retiring list for you that you can access. If I can find my... Oh, here we go. It's a lot larger for people that struggle with vision, such as myself. So the font is bigger. I got rid of all the French stamp sets. I condensed it all as much as I could. I categorized everything. And so it's a really nice uh, list. And you can find it here at tinyurl.com slash barb stamps retire list. And you can download that and uh, print it off. And hopefully it will help you uh, be able to see the retirement list a little bit better. Um, and here's our cards. And um, if you guys need to place an order right now, uh, all orders that are placed with me in my online store at shoppingwithbarb.com will be entered in a drawing for a free three-month subscription, a basic subscription, to Stamp Happy Academy. And if you already are a member and you are the winner, then you will get your account put on hold for three months. You'll still have the content, but you won't have to pay for three months. So that's it, you guys. Back to retreat prep, and I will see you.